I would consider myself a white nationalist and I would consider myself a member of the alt-right. That was James Patrick Reardon in Ohio and he was actually arrested over the weekend because he had put out a video where he was shooting a gun and threatening to shoot up a Jewish community center near where he lives. In the short video posted on Reardon's Instagram account on July 11th, he fires a gun and the sounds of screams and sirens can be heard in the background. The video was captioned, police identified the Youngstown Jewish Family Community Center as local white nationalist Seamus O'Reardon. This uh, shooter, shooter. Uh, and Seamus. Seamus. Yeah. Okay, uh, but um, it's fascinating. I've never seen a white nationalist racist guy uh, so pleasant in a mugshot. Uh, so uh, not he's so pleasant when he's threatening to shoot and kill everyone. But uh, but it, uh, the reason I bring it up is not just because it's weird and amusing and off, right? Uh, but because I think he is actually happy to be caught. Um, he. Um, they, these guys are literally dying for attention. Uh, and a lot of them go through with the shooting and then uh, get killed. But they're like, as long as I get the attention. Uh, so this guy looks like he just wanted to draw attention to himself. Like I'm really, really about to do the shooting. Uh, and it luckily it didn't happen and nobody was killed. Uh, but like his mugshot does tell a part of the story. And it, whether it's uh, Muslim extremists, right wing extremists, white nationalist extremists, a lot of it is about me, 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 give me attention because I'm a loser and I have no way of getting fame or attention to me or relevance in my life other than doing this extreme act. And so I think the mugshot is actually a little telling. The authorities said that he showed absolutely no remorse when he was arrested. Mm -hmm. He seems pretty proud of himself. And I just want to be clear in that he might want attention. I think that there's definitely validity to that. But at the same time, he is a white nationalist and genuinely believes some of the horrendous things we hear from white nationalists in this country today. In fact, he was part of the hate rally that took place in Charlottesville, Virginia. And Katie Couric happened to interview him. So I'm gonna show you that video. This was a video done for National Geographic. And just listen to what James Patrick Reardon had to say. I would consider myself a white nationalist and I would consider myself a member of the alt-right. And what does that mean to you? White nationalist, I want a homeland for white people and I think every race should have a homeland for their own race. So do you agree that uh, with the guy who organizes, organizes Jason Kessler that America should be 80 to 85 percent white? Yes. And, and why? I think uh, there's a demographic decline going on, not only here but in Europe and we need some place that can be a white homeland. So again, this is another extremely young white guy who has somehow been radicalized. Later in the interview, he was asked what his parents think about his actions and and the fact that he was going to attend the Charlottesville hate march. And both of his parents were very much against it. But somehow he's been radicalized in this way and thinks that there's some sort of issue with the declining white population in America. By the way, authorities also found us a lot of weapons in his home. Authorities found anti-Semitic and white nationalist propaganda in Reardon's house and also seized multiple semi-automatic weapons, dozens of rounds of ammunition, a gas mask and bulletproof armor. In the next photo, you can actually see the weapons that they took from the raid. Yeah, so first of all, someone should ask the president, is this one of the very fine people he was referring to that was on that side in Charlottesville? So the president talked about, hey, both sides are responsible for the violence, even though only one side did the violence, that was the right wing. And that they were very fine people on both sides, which ones? And so you have to remember that Charlottesville, it was the worst of the worst. Even groups like Proud Boys were like, don't go. And and a lot of that that group is considered a hate group by many and, and has reveled in violence, including recently. And and even they were like, I wouldn't go there. The Charlottesville, they, they chanted the Jews will not replace us. And so that connects me to the next part of this, which is that I don't think people realize how much Jewish Americans are in danger and under attack currently by the radical right wing. And you, you might be wondering why, like don't they hate Muslims more? Uh, don't, you know, And they've got a pl- and Latinos and those are the th- folks that are mainly in the news. No, if you go down the rabbit hole of their conspiracy theories, uh, it always ends with the Jews. And because they can't, even in their crazy irrational minds, they can't f- 
find a way to th say that Muslims are in charge of the country or that Latino immigrants are in charge of the country. So they go to, oh, it must be the Jews. They're the ones with the money and they control the media and the banks, etc. All of these anti Semitic conspiracy theories. So, to that point, a really interesting fact that I wanted to bring up to you guys is so, hate crimes motivated by religious bias have risen by about a quarter, 24% between 2015 and 2017. That doesn't even get to 2018 and 2019 where they got way worse, right? But of that, the group that is targeted most is Jews. And their percentage of being targeted among the different religious attacks went from 51%. It was already really high. It was already the majority of all attacks against religion, okay? Against religious people based on their religion. It is now at 58%. So it's not Muslims, it's not Christians, it's not Buddhists, it's not. It's 58% of the attacks are against Jews. Because in all of these crazy, extreme right wing propaganda, it always comes back to the Jews rule everything. So you gotta hit the Jews. So this guy, that's why they did Charlottesville. That's why in Charlottesville they didn't chant the Muslims will not replace us. They chanted the Jews will not replace us. That's why when Donald Trump equivocates on Charlottesville, it, I mean, other than it's being atrocious on a thousand different levels, it's as anti Semitic an act as you could possibly do. And yet, we're not having a conversation about how outrageously anti Semitic the president is. And these guys, of course, oftentimes encouraged by the president and other right wing ideologies that they hear. Yeah, don't get me wrong, they hate Muslims, they hate Latinos, transgender people. We got another case coming up there. But again, this guy. Uh, looking to target uh, a synagogue, a synagogue targeted in Pittsburgh, a synagogue targeted in San Diego. A lot of people killed in those events, obviously, and constantly comes back to the synagogues. By the way, a lot, this is not talked about much in Charlottesville. Nazis were marching in front of a synagogue, and and the people inside were uh, deathly afraid to come out. I mean, that's in the United States of America, and Donald Trump couldn't find the courage or the inclination to condemn that forcefully. So that's where we are today, and I say he's looking for attention. Don't get me wrong, so was the guy who shot up the synagogue in Pittsburgh and killed 11 people. It's just that whether we caught him or didn't catch them in time, and to what degree they're seeking attention. But the way that they're seeking attention is through murder. That's why he had all those weapons ready to go. And, and thank God the cops caught him before he actually did something. And one more thing about that. That is why the Department of Homeland Security dismantling a group looking into right wing extremists is literally deadly dangerous because these guys are online like this guy putting up videos saying hey I'm going to shoot up a synagogue and post after post on from different guys saying look I'm looking forward to murdering people and we don't have enough guys at, at homeland security and otherwise chasing them down this is the the low hanging fruit I mean they're looking like they they in New York they were targeting mosque after mosque after mosque they went to New Jersey to try to look for if people inside mosque and what they found was in that case after years of it looking into it innocent muslims praying right that's a giant waste of resources and way I'm not saying you don't look after muslim extremists online hell yes you do okay but use your limited resources in a smart way that targets the people who are online going me right here I'm looking to murder people right well then those are the guys you should target no matter what side of the political spectrum they come from so some people might find what I'm about to say super controversial but I now believe that the way that we've been perceiving these stories has been naive, right? Because we think about it in the context of how we would respond to left wingers carrying out violence. And we have condemned the the very rare instances of left wingers carrying out violence. Now at the same time, the right wing not only did away with the you know, the department that was focused on right wing extremism in in this country, they also continuously make excuses for the violence. Or they cover up the violence. I mean, you have to consider the fact that various law enforcement agencies throughout the country, whether we're talking about border patrol or local police departments, have been infiltrated by white supremacists. There have been numerous reports on that. No, they don't do anything about it, Jake. Not because, oh, there happens to be some sort of blind spot. They they like this. They like this. They push this rhetoric on a regular basis. And then when the violence is actually committed, they don't condemn it. Yeah, you know our own investigative reporter Ken Klippenstein on TYT Investigates got a document, internal document from the FBI, 
where they said that white right wing extremism like this one was a mid level threat. They said black identity extremists was the highest threat there was. There's almost no shootings at all from black identity extremists. There's one massacre after another and planned massacres by white right wing extremists. Mm -hmm. And and so I after Anna's right after all of this I was kind of dumbfounded by that. How could you, how could this be your job and you'd be that monumentally wrong about the threats? Because white right wing extremists to them are not that big a threat to them, right? Not only to the that. people in charge. Mm -hmm. Whereas the black identity extremists in their minds, even if they exist. And, and by the way, I had uh, Daryl Johnson on here, who was a person who was in charge of investigating white right wing extremists, a Republican in the Bush administration. And he said, yeah, they shut us down and it, it, and it was outrageous because we saw it bubbling up and we could have done something about it. And, and he explained that they also target a lot of left wing groups. Some of them, and he's a Republican, so he's like some small fraction of them could be potentially dangerous. But the larger fraction, he admits, or the larger portion of it, are not at all dangerous. But he pointed out, but they are seen as a bigger threat to the system. Yes, exactly, exactly. And you know, just think about the double standard when it comes to the response to various groups, right? So you'll have these white supremacists and neo Nazis chanting, the Jews will not replace us. And you'll have someone like Donald Trump equivocating, saying that there are very fine people on, on both sides. But at the same time, think about the way he and others in the right wing talked about Black Lives Matter. What is the one thing that they kept referencing when it came to Black Lives Matter to, to paint them as a violent and dangerous group of people? That one time when a small group of, of individuals chanted pigs in a blanket, watch them fry. And that was it, that was it. A few people chanted that. And that was all they needed to generalize about the entire Black Lives Matter movement. In fact, they called them terrorists. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> no, they they treat both sides very differently. We already know that. And we need to stop pretending as if they're against the violence on their side. They, they incite it, they encourage it with their rhetoric. And then when it's actually carried out, you know, in some cases, it's applauded by Trump by saying there's very fine people, and you know they'll provide a cover for it, and they'll deflect. They'll deflect by saying, no, but Antifa, look at Antifa. In fact, uh, there was a leaked House Republican memo that uh, reporters in Florida were able to obtain, and it talked about the specific talking points that Republican lawmakers uh, should use if they're questioned about white nationalism. Yeah, so I wanna make two quick points about what Anna just said. Number one, over the weekend, Donald Trump said Antifa should be labeled a, a, an organization of terror because they had clashes with um, uh, Proud Boys, uh, Oath Keepers, militia, and neo-Nazis in Portland. Now, Donald Trump made no tweets about the neo-Nazis or any of the extreme right wing groups. He did not call them terrorists. He said the guys resisting them, the anti-fascists should be called terrorists. Now, isn't that interesting? When Jews are targeted in Israel by Muslims, immediately they're called terrorists. And they should be because they go after civilians. But here in America, when you have white right wing extremists targeting Jews, so I only use that because it's apples to apples. They go, no, they're not terrorists. It's crazy. What? How could they not be terrorists? They're targeting civilians for a political ideology and one that unites them, that ideology unites them. Yeah, I know, but they're white and they're right wingers and you're not allowed to criticize that in this country. Well, you gotta have at least some sort of reasonable standard that applies to everyone. Otherwise, stop using the word terrorist. This guy who was arrested was definitely attempting to be a terrorist. The TYT Plus app is now available on iOS and Android. Download to get more TYT content at tyt.com slash app.